Brain stimulation comes down to one thing, location. To help pinpoint the region of Sybil's brain where he would be working, neurosurgeon Roy Bacay used magnetic resonance imaging. Since Sybil's symptoms were worse on the right side, doctors would implant the left side of her brain, which controls the right side of her body. Oh, so well. Then Sybil said goodbye to her family and got ready for an operation that could last as long as eight hours. Good morning. Good morning. Are you ready? Ready. All right. An anesthesiologist gives Sybil a small dose of local anesthesia, and the doctors prepare to drill a hole into her skull for the electrode. That's what they will use to discover the exact dimensions of the location in her brain that's malfunctioning. Finding the target area holds the key to Sybil's future. If the stimulator is implanted correctly, she may finally be free of the tremor and pain that have haunted her for years. But if the placement is off, the results could be devastating. If you implant the device too far in one direction, you get one side effect. If you go too far in the other direction, you get a different side effect. So when you go into the brain with some electrical current, there's a lot of things that you can set off unintentionally. If you're in the wrong spot. How are you doing, Sybil? Make sure you're not too drowsy for us. I'm here. OK, good. Remember, she's awake throughout this entire procedure. That's possible because the brain itself feels no pain. Dr. Bacay and Dr. Vitek use the electrode to map Sybil's brain. The device electronically records the activity of individual cells within her brain, so the doctors can actually hear the trouble spots. That noise is the sound of a neuron misfiring, sending the wrong message to Sybil's arm. Yeah, it's very shoulder, maybe something in the It's a painstakingly slow process. Any uh, numbness in your hand or leg when I do this? Now? No. Now? Okay. The team repeats the procedure a half dozen times. I'll pick the arm up. I'll put it down. Good. I'll pick it up again. Okay. Good. They are hunting for a target about the size of a fingertip. Inside hidden layers of brain tissue they can't even see. We are trying to implant a device that's about a millimeter in diameter into a structure that's about eight millimeters in diameter. And we can't see below the surface of the brain, so it can be difficult in terms of finding the right spot. Do this, now tap your finger like this for me, ready? Tap, okay, keep tapping. It's hard work for everyone, especially Sybil. Tell me if you feel any tingling or any pulling in there, okay? But her spirits stay high, yeah. even as the surgery drags on. Thinking about um, when I'll be walking, Finally, the doctors think they have placed the electrode in the exact location that will help Sybil. When they turn on the stimulator, she suddenly shows an astonishing range of motion in her legs and hands. Pick a leg up at all? There you go. Up and down. Drop it down now. Now pick it up. Great. And she couldn't do that before. So. How about the hand? Can you open and close your hand for me at all? Good. Okay. And when Dr. Vitek turns off the stimulation, Sybil's tremor and stiffness return. I turned off the stimulator. Don't be worried, OK? Can you move your ankle up and down? It's, it's hard to do for her. Now that the tests are completed, it's time for the final st The insertion of the metal wire, or lead, that will carry the electrical impulse to Sybil's brain. Now, Dr. Bacay is going to implant it. We'll test it one more time. And then that'll be it, all right? But this time, something's not quite right. Sybil's eyes begin to tingle. Your eyes feel a little funny? Yeah. My eyes feel funny. By now, more than five hours have gone by. The strain of the testing is starting to show on Sybil. I have to bolster up my strength. I have to be strong. And for her family, two floors away, they've had plenty of time to wait and worry. The hardest part about today, I guess, was once mommy had the head frame put on and it just, it was just, it really was scary. Back in the OR, the doctors try again to find the elusive target they hope makes Sybil well. You're gonna do that again? Oh, no. Uh oh, sorry. Uh -huh. Any eye, any changes with your eyes now? Your eyes okay? <laughs> Yeah, okay. okay. At last, they decide. They've found the tiny region they've been hunting for half a day. If anything is going to help Sybil, this is it. Mr. Guthrie, we're going to leave it here, okay? okay. After six grueling hours of brain surgery, 
two more hours to insert the power source in her chest, Sybil's ordeal was finally over. But it was still too early to know how well her gamble would pay off. It was two off. days after the operation and a moment that would test Sybil's dreams. Let's see how you do. After two long years trapped in a wheelchair, would she finally be able to walk? Right arm is swinging. So the right arm swings, yeah. I've swung my right arm for I don't know how long. <laughs> it has not swung for a while. I'm encouraged. I think it looks very good. <laughs> what about that? Were all her dreams about to become a reality? I don't know if I'm walking straight, but I'm walking. <laughs> Six weeks after the operation, the changes on her right side were even more dramatic. Can you mark, get set, go. Before, it was impossible for Sybil to get up from a chair by herself. After surgery, it was no problem. Okay. Her right hand didn't shake at all, but most importantly, she could walk. Most people say, wow, you walking. can walk. Right about there. All those benefits on the right side of Sybil's body were from the pulse generator stimulating the left side of her brain. Uh, it's off now. When Dr. Marion Ebbett turned the stimulation off with a magnet, as she and did here for a routine it. test, the tremor returned to Sybil's right hand almost instantly. But when it was on, even everyday chores felt like a miracle. It's thrilling. Before, she had to depend on me for everything. It's just one for to not to depend on someone for everything you need. <laughs> she was doing so well that Dr. Vitek had a surprising suggestion. More surgery. We'd get the same benefits on that side that we've gotten on this side. He thought that a second implant in the right side of Sybil's brain could get rid of the tremor in her left hand and might improve her stride. But it also meant another difficult operation. Once again, Sybil decided she was ready for the risks. I'm ready to go. I'm not scared. So, incredibly, just three months after her first surgery, Sybil was headed back into the operating room. Okay, sweetie. Okay. 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 And once more, finding the right spot worked magic. Big smile? Good. Okay. I knew. I knew right away. The minute they got in and he hit the target. It's like magic. Good. Okay, open and close your hand. He said to me, open your hand and close your hand. And so I knew right away. It's amazing. Sybil now had two stimulators one for each side of her body. It was only a month after her second surgery when we caught up with Sybil again. So Sybil, how do you feel? Great. <laughs> Remember that wheelchair? It was gathering dust in the garage. Her other symptoms were also distant memories. When I talked to you before you had any surgery, one of your biggest problems was that you couldn't turn over in bed. I was really concerned about that, but now, I roll back and forth. <laughs> you can't stop me now. <laughs> now, the woman who never wanted to slow down doesn't have to. Show me what, what can you do now that you couldn't do before that? Oh, good heavens, look at that. Look at her. Look at that. Sybil and Alvin had hoped for a lot from the surgery. But the outcome was better than they could have imagined. <laughs> Did she do this every day? <laughs> She's busy making up for lost time with old friends. <laughs> and new. And she has no problem at all with smiling. <laughs> Sybil's family thinks her attitude had a lot to do with her recovery. And they say the best part about the surgery, now her vibrant spirit isn't held back by anything. I'm back. I know I look at her and I think, boy, this is like I have my mother back. So it's just a nice, nice feeling. The stimulator implanted in her brain controls the symptoms. But Sybil still has Parkinson's disease. And doctors really don't know what will happen in the long term. But for the time being, the Guthries are counting their blessings and planning their next vacation, a seven-day cruise to the Caribbean. <laughs> That's amazing. Look at her. I feel as if I've, I've been given my life back. And I'm taking hold of it. Sybil's story is a best case scenario. Doctors say not all Parkinson's patients can expect such good results from deep brain stimulation. But while the effects may vary from person to person, the treatment does appear promising, and the FDA expects to approve it in the next year or two.